In this video, we are going to take a look at variables in a scientific inquiry process. And so by the end of this video, you are going to be able to define the terms variable, independent variable, dependent variable, and control variable. And you're going to be able to determine what the independent, dependent, and control variables are in a scientific question. So let's start out with what are variables. Well, variables are really just anything that you can change in a scientific inquiry process. Now, typically scientists will usually manipulate one variable and then go ahead and measure the response in another variable. So some examples of this might include things like temperature or growth. So that could be how high or something's growing or the length of time it takes to grow to a certain height. Could be things like rates of change. So how fast something is going, the rate of speed or the rate of melting, or it could be time. So these are all really great examples of types of variables. Now we actually have some very specific types of variables that we need to take a look at. The first one is the independent variable. And so this is the one that when you're doing an experiment, this is what you are changing each time you perform the experiment. And so this is the variable that is manipulated. There's only ever one in an experiment, and that's because we need to control what we are manipulating in order to know what sort of an effect it's going to have overall. So let's look in a, at an example. If we were studying how the volume of water affects the growth of a plant, then what would the independent variable be? So the independent variable here would be something like the volume of water that we add to the plant. You could measure this in milliliters and that's a really nice way of quantifying that independent variable. The second type of variable we've, we have is the dependent variable. And so this is what we're measuring. So this is the result that we're looking at each time we perform the experiment. It's the variable that is responding or dependent on the independent variable. And I know the terminology is a little, you know, eh, but we'll get the hang of it. Um, so again, there's only one in an experiment because we do need to be able to measure what the response is. We need to control for everything else outside of that. Now let's go back to our example. If we're studying how the volume of water affects the growth of a plant, what would the de dependent variable be? Well, in this case, the dependent variable could be the height of the plant growth. And if you wanted to quantify that, you could take a ruler and measure it in centimeters. And that would be a really great way to do that. Now, there are a few tips to remember when it comes to independent and dependent variables. First, the independent variable or IV is the cause. It's not affected by any other variable. Whereas the dependent variable or DV is the effect. It depends on the IV. When we get into graphing our results, it's important to note just on this graph here that the independent variable is always graphed on the x-axis and the dependent variable is always graphed on the y-axis. So that's just something to keep in mind as we move forward. The final type of variable that we need to look at are control variables. So these are all of the other things that could affect the experiment and we don't want them to affect the experiment. So they must be kept constant during that experiment in order to understand what the independent and dependent variables are doing. Let's return back to our example. So if we're looking at watering plants, so the volume of water that affects the height of the plant growth, what would the control variables be here? Well, you could have a variety of different controls. So you could, 
for example, control the quantity of light. So how much light is all of your plants getting? How many minutes or hours are you exposing them to light? You could also control for the type of plant. You wouldn't want two different plants because then you would be comparing and you would have that other factor in there too. So you wanna control the type of plant. You also wanna control the type of soil as well as the type of water. And this can go on for quite a bit. Like you really do have to put a lot of thought into what you are controlling for in your experiment and making sure everything besides the independent and dependent variable is being kept constant. So let's apply this to another example. Um, we've got 20 people that are given the same quantity of toothpaste and are told to brush at the same time for the same length of time each day. 10 of the people ate foods high in sugar and the other 10 ate foods low in sugar. After six months, the number of cavities was determined. So in this experiment, what would be the independent variable, the dependent variable, and the potential control variables? Well, let's go through this. So the independent variable would be the quantity of sugar consumed. You could quantify this in grams if you would like. The dependent variable would be the number of cavities. So this is just simply measured in a uh, number of cavities. And so there's not really units that go with that specifically. And then there's a variety of things you would want to control for. Here are a few I came up with. So the type of toothpaste, the quantity of the toothpaste, the number of brushings, and the length of brushing time. And I'm sure you came up with a few others as well on your own. So that summarizes what variables are. So you should know independent, dependent, and control variables and be able to identify those in a scientific question.